got an incredible array of stuff here that showed up. And the first thing that I want to talk about did not show up in the mail. It actually came into my shop about four years ago from my friend Neil Groves. This is mammoth ivory or mastodon ivory. To just handle that and think about that that is a piece of fossilized, fossilized, it's not stone, but that's the term that's applied to fossilized, fossil ivory, old ivory. But it's neat and I just don't see myself ever tearing this thing apart to make knife scales out of it, right? I mean, a piece of a mammoth as close to its original form as you can own it has got to be a good of first intent. And to transform this into 10 or 15 sets of knife scales and a whole bunch of slivers just doesn't feel like the right thing. So you may see this again, but it has value in and of itself. So thank you, Neil, once again. Next item. This comes from just a few miles up the road in Yoncala, Oregon, from a neighboring smith that I haven't met yet, Dennis Brooks. Dennis, thank you for this. And you read the videos just right. I don't have a handle for holding up close and personal a little bitty quench tank that you can take to the job and localize the heat in a small and controllable way. So this is pretty brilliant for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a project that any smith can do. So thank you for that idea, Dennis. I get guys in the shop all the time and I think, what should I have them do? They can go home with a tool of their own making. It fits a can that's replaceable. I mean, who doesn't have a soup can? Well conceived, well executed. Thanks for reaching out. And uh, I appreciate the fact that I have a tool now that I will always use that I didn't even know I needed. Thanks, Dennis. I got two little items from Alex and they are great ideas for Christmas ornaments. Nice little kind of a twisted icicle, snap swivel, fishing heavy duty, and a candy cane. Who doesn't understand a candy cane for Christmas? So Alex, thank you very much. This goes in the good idea bin to help people learn smithing on their first day. Thanks a million. Tommy Morton, Great Britain, Pilgrim Leathercraft. And he includes some dollars that he had left over from a trip abroad. I'm gonna assume you're over here stateside sometime in the past and that these things are no good where you're at. But uh, anyhow, so thank you for that. But thank you particularly for these coasters, for the stickers, for the key fob. He's got this beautifully understated logo and design with some, a leather cutter's knife on a black background and the coolest font, Pilgrim Leathercraft. Okay, that's going on Nate's key fob. Mine right now weighs about 87 pounds and my ignition just won't take it. But Tommy, this is beautiful. Thanks for watching, thanks for reaching out. Maybe someday I'll get to meet you over there on that beautiful little island. So this next item is not just a grainy old black and white photograph of three blacksmiths at work. In fact, I just gotta, I gotta read a bit of this. Blacksmith scene, also known as blacksmith scene number one and blacksmith scene is an 1893 American short black and white silent film. 1893. This is, an, this is the second oldest film that's included in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress and it is kept as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. This is an example of the first known and recorded example of actors being featured in a film, 1893. How appropriate is that, that at that great turning of the tide from handwork to industrial work, from craftsmen at work at their own blood, sweat, and tears to machines producing the things that we need for life, that it was blacksmiths that they captured at that time when motion pictures began to dominate our culture. Could these guys have imagined what motion pictures would be today? The beauty of being a blacksmith today is that we can imagine what they were doing. And I, I kind of treasure that, so thank you. This is from Till Edward and the team that helped us bring our blacksmithing course to market last year. We had a wonderful time working with these people and we have had unexpected friendship flourish as a result. That's one of the things that always happens when you're playing around with blacksmithing. So I'm going to work my way through this stack of letters and stickers. It, it's, you know, some of them are so gripping for me that I bogged down a little bit, but they're terrific. But as we were kind of going through this, I found this other pile of stickers, some of which I brought home with me from Texas, from some of the fascinating people that I met at the Good of the Land Festival down there a couple months ago. Some of them are from a tour I had of the Leatherman factory, oh, I guess about a month ago. What an amazing place that is. These are oxen shoes in the same way that horses had to have shoes to keep their hooves from wearing back to where they were lame when they were working and walking and pulling and grinding. Oxen who have moved their share of things for humans over the millennia had to have their feet shod also. And that's what a pair of ox shoes looks like. And let me just say, Tim, you're right. I don't have a pair of these in the shop. I've been asked if I can make them and I said, ah, I don't have one to copy and I've never seen one. But 
thank you. It means a lot. And square nails. His grandfather and great grandfather were blacksmiths, and he sent me two, three old square nails, undoubtedly wrought iron. And uh, actually, his granddad's made nails for a living, or at least to augment their income. That takes a special kind of endurance. So anyhow, Tim, thanks a million from Idaho. We appreciate it very much indeed. Eric McCartney reached out from Greenville, South Carolina. He has a business, an online business called The Sawmill Shop, and he sent these cool little placards that he makes. He has a little footprint on Etsy. He started when he was 17, he's 21 now, and I salute you, Eric. Takes courage and ambition to bring anything to market. So keep that up, will you? And thanks for these little placards, they're just cool. I've spent a reasonable amount of time in my life reading a letter to Thessalonians. But this is the first time in my life that I've read a letter to me from a Thessalonian. Christos in Greece, in Thessalonica, has sent me a, just a nifty little package. He has education enough that make, lets him make circuit boards and make iron electrical gizmos. This will be part of our family's Christmas celebration next year. But what I really like is this. Homer, the Iliad. And I hope you believe me when I tell you this, Christos. I've been thinking for about the last two months, you know, I need to acquaint myself with Homer. I need to read this beautiful epic poem about rage and conflict and revenge and satisfaction and anyhow, I am anxious to spend a little time with Homer reading the Iliad and making at least a half-hearted attempt to make myself an educated man. So you've helped me in several ways. You all have helped us in ways innumerable, primarily with encouragement. And you know, I don't know what experiences you've had in your life when encouragement was necessary, but I can tell you that running a YouTube channel sometimes, it's nice to get some encouragement. Last item, and we've reset the camera because we'd set this off to the side, and it's pieces of wood, right? And wood is great. But these are three species that I've never heard of. Asta, A-S-T-A, Moral, 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 and Guayacan, or Guriacum coulter. I don't know, I hope I can get that right, but I'm assuming these are tropical hardwood species. I'm assuming, Eric, thank you very much, that these are things that are intended for sword handles, knife scales, knife handles. I'm anxious to smooth one of these up, get a little little um, sealer on them, see what kind of color they project, see how this grain sort of presents itself. So anyhow, I've got a lot of, a lot of swords and knives that are kind of rolling around in the back of my head. There's gonna be a chance to use this, I'm sure. So Eric, thank you, appreciate it very much. So with that, thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.